one. That's stupid, like to make attacks on the shirt or uh, I prefer like go go on the police station and make tag over there. For me, I think graffiti as an art, as an expressing of yourself. And when you do historical building, when you, when you build something and it's beautiful, I think it's the same, you know, because you put something in, in, from, from you into it. We're in the mid, midway between our form and totally vandalism. This is too human, this kind of stuff. The city, even before graffiti, Roma, it was quite a, of names. Even if it's a political, you know, group, or even if it's his girlfriend name, there will be always a, a, a guy who, who will start drawing his name. Two years ago, I went to London for Christmas and um, I walked down Shaftesbury Avenue and like two days later, like, I walked through it and I see Dwayne tags and a few other local things. So now I know that some guy from Sweden passed through Shaftesbury Avenue between this and this date using this and this color and like uh, where it's placed and how it's placed and how big it is or how it's shaped gives you an, an idea of the movements you have to do to make it, you know. So the placement of the tag is really subtle, there's subtleties in it, as well as the thing of dangerous places, harder places, tags by police stations and risky, risky things like that. It is a minor contribution to the overall scene, and in some senses, you know, it doesn't look very appealing. But like I say, at the same time, there's nothing like a truck or a gate or some particular wall that just has nothing but tags, nothing very beautiful. It's a real snapshot of what the movement really is all about. And that is individuals writing their names on walls, expressing who they are in the most minute way. Their tags. A way to be somebody. Not to be a pop star or to be a big film star or to be anything big, but just a little somebody. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for doing that. I would not have chased that fucking rainbow, do you know what I mean? You know, I was golden before the gold. I was painting. I was golden. I was going out painting the walls. You know what I mean? I was, I was getting known for painting. You want to put your name? Which you reckon? Like, somebody reads that fucking name and says, "I know that kid." You, you sort of like think this this person has more to them as an individual. You build up a sub character. Goldie's Goldie's right there. Me, I'm here. You make that character. That's what graffiti did for people. It gave people confidence. Some of the biggest writers, the most prolific writers I ever met. I'm like, hello, fucking hell. Is that the guy? Some white kid, scraggly hair. So it's almost like um, I have agents working for me and I put them in different places around the city and they just they just stand there and pose for me. And everyone walks by and they say, yeah, that, that's me, that's Prime. You never lose that. What you do lose is time in life where you can actually do that. That's what you do lose. I am a person in society. I go to work, I contribute. I pay my taxes. I'm a kind of like regular kind of person. I do all that shit that everybody else does. I go to work for one reason and one reason only, to get paid. My time outside of that is very valuable to me and I want to enjoy myself. And one of my hobbies is doing graffiti. Everyone's got a tag and if you've got 10 tags on a shop shutter or on the side of a wall, none of those tags are really going to stand out unless it's somebody who's famous. So I kind of like I didn't want a tag, I wanted, I wanted like a symbol, something a little bit stronger than a tag. So you can just catch a glimpse of that and that's it, you, it, you, you recognise it, you know it's there, you've seen it and it's like yes, there it is, there's another one. And uh, it works. And I like, I like walking around and seeing my tag there and seeing it there and seeing one from back in 89 there and it's nice. People come up to me and say, yeah, I didn't realise you did that, so just a little ego boost. It's like, yeah. There's not really many places in London you can go without seeing one of the traps. Um, they're, they're everywhere. Once you stop, no one's talking, you, uh, to talking about you after a couple of months. You're dead, actually. So that's what you actually keeps, uh, that keeps you active. I mean, you have to do more, you have to do more, so people still speak about you. If you stop, you get, you, you're forgotten after a couple of years, you're forgotten, unless you were special. No, I don't get fame, I don't get paid. I have to do it once in a while. I have an idea, I have to do it. I'm not feeling confident if I, if I have an idea and I haven't done it. 
because I'm always in fear of having an idea someone might, might do it before me. I was never concerned, never concerned about getting paid for it. All I wanted was the fame. I'll be honest with you, I don't have tons of money, you know, from it. And it was just a, a, an ego trip of fame thing that, you know, hey, that's me. And during the course of time, what it did do is make a lot of people know me. And know of me, or maybe know me personally, or their life. Uh, it kept me busy. You know, that would be the answer. Get me out of trouble. When I was on my own and I didn't have anything better to do, I could always have my pens and my paint to fall back on. I could sit in my house at 2 o'clock in the morning and say I'm going out for four hours. I didn't need to have company. I didn't need to have friends. I didn't need to have nothing. I just went out and done something that was instant satisfaction, free of charge. I was out there every single day without fail, tagging, bombing, whatever you want to call it, I was out there doing it. I used to get night buses to the far reaches of London, get off the night bus and walk home. Eight, nine, ten miles, I would walk home and I would absolutely write on everything that was in my way. As a young person, I, I was shy and I didn't really maybe communicate with other people on a great level. But as I became well known for graffiti, when I met people that maybe I may not have had a lot to say to in the past, I met them as Drax. They already knew kind of what I was all about and that I was prolific and that I was a dedicated writer and they had that element of respect for me. I don't want any fame, I don't want any exposure, but my, my name, the persona that I invented for myself in the graffiti world, I wanted that to be famous and I still do yearn for that. The one thing about graffiti that I think that people lost along the way is the respect for it and, and fellow people doing it. Other ways that aren't as well known will go over a famous person to make a name for themselves. When you do stuff like that, you show no consideration for the guy who done the art. That's suckerness, you know? You're not getting nowhere by come writing your name in somebody's piece, you know? When you could be home practicing on paper, what you gonna do the next time when you get bigger, when you get old enough to do a piece. But the bottom line is, if you never have a writer who thinks he is nasty as the next man, then you ain't gonna have writing because you always got somebody who wanna prove that they as good as the next guy who's doing a piece. The spots I choose mostly are spots which are seen by many people but that doesn't mean that I do them because of the people seeing them because it's just because I myself pass those spots often. It fills most of my time which I'm awake. I paint alone mostly so I have the possibility to think. With every painting there are thoughts connected. I got used to just getting my cans on my own and just walk outside at night, even if it's cold, if it's raining, other people are just sitting at home and maybe watching TV, fucking their wives, just doing stuff that everybody does and I'm able to express myself. I want to be known. In a hundred years, only a couple of names will be remembered. I want to be one of them.